Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. It is a very warm 66 degrees out today. I think it is May 18th and it literally feels like it is about 80 degrees outside. I don't know what is wrong. It just feels so hot today. I have the lucky task of unloading our Connex. That's what I'm working on. Eric took a trip to go get some supplies. He should be back later this evening. I'm over halfway done with unloading it. So I gotta get moving, I have more to do. And we have finally figured out what we are doing for our solar mount. So pretty exciting stuff. We've got a lot of stuff on our agenda. probably wonder if I'm gonna screw these out of here and I am not. Uh, this is my attempt to make these work for Eric when he has to pick them up with the tractor. I'm pretty sure this will work. These sleds are incredibly strong so I really have no uh, no doubt that they can do it and I'm just trying to keep things like under a thousand pounds so we don't have any issues. Hello! I got it all emptied. I'm so excited. I wasn't expecting to accomplish that. Uh, I hope Eric is going to be happy when he gets home. They even got the trailer all filled up. I unloaded the whole thing by myself. Good job. Um, how was your trip? I heard you about a quarter mile ago. The reason I'm in the way is the truck won't start. Why won't it start? I don't really know. I went to uh, put it in reverse. found. Aye. Let's pop the hood. Well, good morning, everyone. We are getting started on another huge project today around here. And yesterday I went on a long drive. It was the second time I've done that drive in three days. It's a long drive, but it's beautiful. I saw a ton of wildlife. It was pretty awesome. Errol was here taking care of the Connex. I didn't expect her to get that whole entire thing unloaded. That was gonna be both of us doing that. That kind of gets us ahead in this project and we're ready to start on the next step. Let's head over to the Connex. <laughs> As you can tell, things look completely different around here. So it's pretty much summertime here in Alaska. All of our snow has melted and today is going to be another cooker. I think it's going to get almost to 70 degrees, which is going to be just awesome to work in. Everyone's feeling good. The animals are out. Bandit, he can just hang out outside now with us. He doesn't have to have his jacket on anymore. And this is our Connex. So we're working on the Connex today because after a lot of thought and a lot of effort, we're going to start working on our solar system and our Connex is where we're going to be mounting our solar panels. We have 12 panels we're gonna be mounting on there. Our other Connex back at our old place 
has our solar panels mounted on top. It's just got two of them, but we absolutely love having the panels mounted on top of these Connexes. It just seems like you already have the Connex there. So if you put the panels on top, they're out of the way, they're up nice and high. It just works really well for us. This Connex is a 20 foot Connex. We originally got this at a garage sale, maybe like six months ago. We took it to our old property. We hauled it up here in the winter and it's just been sitting here storing our stuff. Errol emptied it out and now it's time to move it. We're gonna be moving it, I don't know, maybe three or 400 yards that way. How we're gonna be moving it is we're actually gonna be pulling it with the tractor, but we're gonna be rolling it. So we need to go cut down a few dead trees. We'll get some nice round logs. We'll jack it up and we'll see if we can get this thing moved. So we do have a couple dead trees out here that we can take down. That way we don't have to take any live ones down today. I don't know why they died, but they're dead. And I'm thinking we need about three poles uh, to roll that connex, maybe like 10 feet wide each. So we'll cut this first one down and we'll measure them up and we'll see if we need to take another one down. Any, That's guess, in. any guess it's 40? That? That's 45? I can't even measure the whole thing. I just have a regular tape measure. That's pretty, that's long. Yeah, that's probably 45. Uh, I'd say that's 50. Oh. It's leaning that way that much, huh? Yeah, I pinched it in there. Barely, barely yeah, it really wants it. to go. Oh my gosh, it already moved. It did. I barely cut into it and it started to go. Let's go get the, go get the echo and see if we can get it out. Let's ride it out in the middle. That Looks like fall. it died from the bottom up. Like an infestation or something. Jack as much. This one's old school. That one's also half the price. I got it from Harbor Freight. Go home, more in yours. I'm surprisingly not that light. No. Okay, we're about to get this show on the road and I don't think it's gonna be that tricky. Just given the circumstances, we've got nice hard packed gravel and then we also have like this short distance we're going with very little turns. And we have the tractor and we have the knowledge on how to move a Connex. This isn't our first time moving this one. So like Errol said, it's not very far, but we're gonna kind of just move it to one area. We're gonna do some work to it and then we're gonna move it that same distance to its final resting spot. This property, we have a lot of space to pick where we want the solar. But really you want it, I mean, solar is really important to put in a very specific location, obviously because you get the sun coming from the south, which is about this direction. And this area we're at is a phenomenal location for solar, but we couldn't pick this area. Yeah, in a dream world, we would put it almost where it's at, just over there a little bit, because we have all these trees cleared in front of us for like a couple hundred yards. So you would get the most sun you can get, which is important in the winter and the fall in Alaska when the sun just barely peaks up. But we're gonna be keeping our inverter and our batteries way over there 
So, I mean, it's like a thousand feet. It's just way too far to dig a trench and run the wiring from the solar panels all the way over there. We want to try to keep the solar panels within about like, we want to aim for like under 200 feet from where the batteries and the inverter is going to go. So that's why we're moving it over there. And it should work out really good over there. We do have to clear some trees. We're trying not to clear that many trees because there is already a really large clearing here, probably two to three acres. But I think as things go on, we're going to actually have to cut, cut down live trees, which is never that fun. So no, but we got the dead one all cut down <laughs> and we got it underneath the Connex. So we have it jacked up and we have it sitting on two of the uh, poles right now, we'll call them. And then the third one's just sitting over there. That one's ready to go. What we're going to do is Ariel's going to hop on the tractor. She's going to pull it forward. And as the back log kind of falls out the back, I'll take that third log and I'll stick it under the front of the Connex. It's going to be slow. It's going to take a while. It's got to be a word for that, but we're rolling. We're rolling the Connex. <laughs> Let's roll. Okay. want it and it went pretty well it, it took a while because it wanted to keep coming off those logs good job everybody this is the metal we we're using so we went to Fairbanks to a metal yard and picked this up and this is two inch by two inch square tubing, I guess it's called, and it's quarter inch thick. We were gonna go a little thinner than that, but they didn't have anything stock. So we're going heavy duty, and we got one piece of two inch flat metal in there too that we're gonna be using. This should be a pretty straightforward build. So what we're gonna do is, these are 20 feet long pieces, and that's a 20 foot connex. We're gonna run one on the bottom corner from this edge to the other edge, and then we're gonna build some sort of uh, bracket in the middle that goes up. That's where we're gonna mount our solar panels too. We need to take some measurements on our solar panels real quick and then we'll be able to just get up there and start welding. So all that metal over there is steel. And then this is, I think the company's called Iron Ridge. They make solar mounting products. And this is our solar mount. These are aluminum. We have six of these, I believe at 14 feet long. So we're gonna use these a little bit later, but let's get into this tarp and get our panels out. So almost five and a half feet. So that means we'll be 16 and a half feet total. That's pretty cool. Well, here it is. Here's what's gonna be turning the sun into electricity for us. These are our solar panels for our system. And obviously we've upgraded our solar system here compared to our old one at our old place. We've only had two panels for four years. It's been awesome for us. Our power needs here are going to be changing a lot. One of the huge things we're going to be running off our system is our well pump. So that's why we're going with a little bit bigger of a system. We have 12 panels here. We're going to be mounting on top of the Connex. These are Heline or Highline. I don't know how you say them, but they're Canadian made solar panels. They're 310 watts each. I think we have like 2,400 watts of solar, something crazy like that. These are pretty much gonna be taking up the whole top of the Connex and how we're gonna mount them, if you can 
imagine it. So we're gonna have basically four of them stacked on top of each other, and we're gonna have three rows of that. So it'll be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That'll give us 12 solar panels, and it's also gonna get them really high up in the air for us. And then we've got the rest of our solar system here. We went with some really cool batteries. These are by a company called Home Grid. This is their stacked batteries. We did five of those, and then we have a Solarc 12K inverter charger. So we're all set over here. Let's get up on top of that Connex. Let's start building their mount. Okay, be careful about that. Okay, so I need two full pieces up there. And then the rest I think we're gonna cut. Okay. Wow, oh, she's beautiful up here. It's not in bad condition. You know what I mean? It's not gonna go in the center. If we put it in the center, our panels are gonna be like... Oh, it's not gonna go in the center? Our panels are gonna be sitting like that. Do we remember what angle we want them? We want them at a steeper angle. Sounded heavy. Oh my gosh. So the way a Connex works is they are not very strong unless you're working with the corners. Those are the strongest spots. So when you see these things like stacked up on top of each other, they're sitting on the corners. So this first piece is where the bottom of the solar panels are gonna start and they're gonna kind of go up like this at a slight angle. And this one's resting on the two corners, but since this is such a long piece of uh, metal, it's 20 feet, it doesn't have a lot of support in the center. So we're gonna put one piece of support in the center. We're gonna get that by just cutting a little piece out of this two inch tubing, stick it under there, we'll weld that in. And as soon as we get this piece welded in, we're kind of trying to figure out how we're gonna do this. So we're gonna run another cross support from the center all the way to that side. The sides are like second strongest on this. And the thing that's just not strong at all is the roof. So you can pretty much just bounce up and down on this thing. So we'll connect to this piece all the way to that side, and then we're gonna get our iron ridge and we're gonna kind of measure out the exact angle we wanna put our panels at. But we got a lot of welding to do, let's get started. Probably an inch? Oh, it's more than that. This would be a good spot to get it. Inch and an eighth, I think. Freaking solid. It's really hot in this jacket. Let's take a lunch break. I think it looks great, huh? I didn't hear you. What was that? You heard me. All right, let me cut this real quick. Awesome, so we've got that first piece of uh, two by two welded on the front, and then we've got a little spacer under there for some support in the middle. And then to get our cross support for this other 20 foot piece that we're gonna put right here, we put about an eight foot piece here, the little spacer on that side, so it's exact same height over there. And now we are 
nice and solid everywhere and this project is kind of like one step at a time so every time we make a weld or put something in we got to come up here we got to take more measurements and we got to put the next piece in and i think our next step actually is going to be grabbing some of that iron ridge and putting it up here and figuring out the exact angle that our solar panels are going to go at and the angle we're going for is going to be somewhat of a steep angle so let's see what we can do no we're just gonna have to scrub it and make sure we maybe there's something with spray on it okay Gee, it looks awesome. Did you hear that too? Big screaming at us, maybe. Well, this is where we are at, and we have made it through the hottest part of the day. I have a sunburn to show for it. We have a lot more work to do, though. We got to keep working. We don't have like a big elaborate plan for this solar mount. We are just kind of like winging it like we always do. We do as much planning and research as we need to get started and then we just jump right in. But I do think that it is turning out very nice. Eric's doing an awesome job with everything up here. We're doing the angle for the solar panels really similar to our last one. Um, we're taking into consideration that we really want to harvest the most solar, I mean year round, but our fall and spring months, we want to kind of be really considerate of those exact times in the winter the sun just barely peaks above the trees so we're not going to get that much anyways and in the summer you do not have to worry about it because there's just a plentiful amount of sun so you're supposed to take like your latitude add 15 degrees for the winter months but really what we end up doing is we do somewhere in like the 70 degree angle that's just like a halfway between summer and winter and it works really well for us year round we've got these huge uh, pieces that go up in this long one that runs runs along the top I don't know what to call it rack and then we've got to make some angled cuts Eric's gonna see about doing that and then add some front little supports for the the iron ridge mounts and this is the angle right here imaginary angle <laughs> Well, we got one to fit, which is awesome. It took a little bit of extra grinding to get those angles. So it's not like a miter saw where you can just put the exact angle you want in there and then just chop it. I was using that chop saw and it took forever to cut through those two cuts, like 15 minutes. So I'm gonna trace that one onto another piece and then I think I'm just gonna try to do it by hand with the uh, cutoff wheel. We'll see how that one goes. Hopefully we can get those up there and get them welded. It's getting kind of late. I got a bedtime. What is it? Midnight? Uh, wherever I get tired. He likes the tarp bed. I need a couple of these.
heard that? Stone cold? Stone cold out. I like that tan you have. It's like the inner. It's in there somewhere. Well, Eric went to replace the wire and the welder and uh, something happened. So it's jammed. So I'm going to make his dinner and we'll see how much further we get tonight. I know he wanted to do quite a bit more on the mount, but I don't know if we're going to be able to or not. We're going to do Let's eat. With warm noodles and chicken. Thank you, man. That looks delicious. I finally got it going. Well, I've never had it happen before, but I was changing the wire in this welder and when it started going through the cord, apparently it got jammed up in there and this is what I found. Looks like a bunch of staples. But that's the welding wire. It just got coiled up in there and got jammed. And then there's a thin piece where it looks like two pieces of wire went through it at once. I don't know how that happened. I can't get the wires out of it. I broke a drill bit in it, so it's sitting over there on the vise. Luckily, I was able just to bypass that and get her to work but that was quite the mess and that ate up about an hour so i still gotta weld all these up but we are starving what time is it eight maybe no it's past eight but i didn't check okay well this looks delicious thanks huh? probably like close to nine you're like super dirty this is awful look at it i had the bottom of it there's a little bit of a gap right there, so I wasn't able to weld that whole part, but I weld the whole other side in the top. So that one's like... That's that strong enough? Oh yeah, it's solid. Final test. <laughs> it's pretty strong. <laughs> you look like a child up there. <laughs> You're supposed to do a loop, man. Huh? A swing, a loop all the way around. I mean, it's freaking rigid. It's nice. That was a good day. Good day. A lot done. of this ladder was put like less than two inches away from the edge of the conex. Are you crazy? Oh my Just gosh. Just don't shake, rattle, and roll up there. Well, It'll be fine. This no, okay? front. Like this side, babe. Look well, at mine. Why do I have to go on the front though? Because the, you're not going to get after your measurement. Another day and a lot of measurements. So we are working on getting our iron ridge mounts set up. And these iron ridge mounts are meant for mounting solar panels. We have six of these in total. These are each 14 feet long. These are aluminum. So we can't just weld these to our steel structure that we just built. So what we're gonna do is I've got these tabs measured out and these I'm gonna drill a hole in, weld them to our steel, and then we're gonna be bolting the iron ridge to it. And then the panels themselves are going to bolt to the iron ridge brackets. We've got six of these to go up and we've got six measured out. I got to go along and weld up some tabs. We're going to go down and cut them. We're going to cut 12 of these. Okay, it's time to weld. We're going to put all 12 of those on. This should be the last welding of the project, I believe. And I have to put this heavy coat on. It is hot out here for us in Alaska. It's like 68 degrees and we are dying. So let's go up there and let's get this done.
So we had hoped to paint this Connex today, but that's not gonna happen. Uh, there's some rain coming in tomorrow, but we do wanna get it cleaned up and primed and be ready to paint the next opportunity we have. So this steel pipe comes with like some sort of a greasy coating on it. We're just gonna remove that with a rag and some acetone. And then Eric's gotta get everything prepped. He's gotta do some grinding and just make sure that all the rust is gone and it's ready to accept the paint. Man, this guy really needs to be pressure washed, huh? Well, those little wire wheels on those grinders are dangerous. I'm telling you, I got tons of them in my clothes and my jeans. I took one in the lip, but I'm doing all right. And thankfully this Connex wasn't too bad. There's not a lot of rust or dings on it. So it didn't take me too long. Errol did a great job cleaning up the metal. Now we can actually touch it without our hands like turning black. I don't know what was on this metal, but it was extremely dirty. And uh, yeah, we're at the point where I think we're gonna pressure wash this thing. We got to get all of our tools put away and all the stuff off the top of here and away from the Connex and we're gonna see if the pressure washer starts up because it's been a while. Hopefully she's running. Well, it's warm enough to do some priming tonight, which is awesome. That's what we wanted to get to. We are going over any like bare metal surfaces where Eric did some grinding, some of those welds, and also the galvanized steel, which is the handles for the door when you open it. We have enough time for things to dry before the storm tomorrow, and then we will see you next time when we're painting this bad boy. Much better. <laughs> will it protect it though and make it look better? He's trying to lay on the throat. The mosquitoes are buzzing. Fun story of the day. Arrow wanted to know how I know how to spray paint. And I think it all started when I was probably about I don't know, six to eight years old. I wanted a bike. It was a GT Mach 1 BMX bike and I didn't have that bike. What I had was a hand-me-down Barbie bike, a little tiny one, and my dad bought me a can of gold spray paint, and I spray painted the whole entire thing gold, including the tires, and then I took a Sharpie and I wrote GT Mach 1 on it. And that's how I learned how to spray paint. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> you said you were three. No, 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 no. I was three and a half when I learned how to ride a bike. I was about six to eight when I learned how to spray paint, apparently.